All right, YouTubers and experimenters, today I'm going to show you how to make a step-by-step -step tutorial on the Slayer slash Ringer circuit that I have here in my previous video. Uh, you can get the supplies just by scavenging parts out of old TVs. Here's a circuit board with a lot of good things. It has a nice good transistor some resistors, extra wires, even has a little flyback coil there. So a lot of your scrap supplies are going to come out of your TVs or televisions or even old computer monitors. Uh, the tube type here is a wire that I got out of the back of the television. It kind of goes around the tube and this is where I get my secondary wire. There's a lot of coils in this thing that goes around and around and that's where you get these shiny copper wire strands. They're about 22 gauge. So they make really good secondaries. Um, then all you need for your Slayer circuit is a nice NPN transistor. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Uh, 2N3055 standard transistor uh, capable of at least you know, an amp. Two amps would be even better. Uh, you just need a simple little resistor of a higher value. That one I think is 100 kilo ohms or 1,000 ohms, I should say. And this one here, it just have to be a high value, high resistance. That one's at 22 kilo ohms. And then I just for the little switch, I just have a nice little clicker button. It's just a momentary switch. Just whenever you push it down, it turns on. When you let off, it goes into resonance mode. So there's not a whole lot to the circuit to get this thing self-oscillating. Over here on the tubes, you can use any size tube. You got smaller ones. I preferred the larger ones because, like I said, this has a lot of wire in it. And if I ramp, wrapped it around this little tube, I would have too much wire. So I chose a larger size tube just to hold all the wire that's on there. You even have a large, large tube. I think I'll wrap that one for a secondary someday. Alright. For the tube, this one is wound clockwise. In the, in the setup that I have, I, I had it counterclockwise. It really doesn't matter which way you wind these coils. Um, it's going to matter mostly on your primary, which side you put your power in, whether it's on this side or this side. And the other side will obviously go to your transistor. We'll get to that here in a second. So if it doesn't work one way, you just have to switch the wires. And the best way to test this out is with alligator clips before you get to soldering everything down. So here's the bottom of my other secondary. It comes out the bottom. Just simple little setup. Not a whole lot to it. It's just like your standard Tesla coil. Okay. So depending on which coil to design you decide, you can find it flat pancake like this. You can go like a cone here, or a honeybee hive, it kind of looks like. Uh, I've seen some that are just simply wound right onto the secondary without much gap. Or I prefer this style simply because you can adjust it. You can attach it here if you're not getting any, uh, if you're getting too much resistance, you can move it down. And it'll increase your amperage into your driving circuit until you get the system going. So you can tune it this way. You can adjust it in or out and get the right resonance for your secondary. So, yeah, depending on what parts you use, you have to use the NPN. Uh, there are some people that use the PNPs, but those guys are a little bit more advanced. They know how to wire these things up without blowing up the transistors. Um, so, yep, here you have your basic ground wire coming in here. And the bottom of your secondary coil is going to be your trigger. It's going to go to your base. So that one's the one that you're going to attach there. And that's going to, once you get that resonating, it's going to start firing that transistor off and getting it to oscillate at its resonant frequency. Then you have the bottom of your secondary. Uh, that's going to go into the collector on your transistor. So the middle one on your transistor. And on these NPNs, they're a little bit different. Your collector is actually the case on the outside. This is your collector wire. So you just, I just soldered a little bit on the outside of that. So 
So this would be your base, your collector, and then your emitter here on the other side. On these it's a little bit simpler because you just go from left to right. Base, collector, emitter. So this is your ground. This is your power coming in after you go into your coil. So depending on where you attach it, you can come in that way. If you wound this the opposite direction, you'd have to go in the bottom and then come out the top and go into here. So that's why I say you use your alligator clips. You can switch them if you got your coils wound the wrong direction. And that's all you have to do is just switch the inputs and then you get the circuit going. Okay, so really that's all you have to do to get a simple Slayer circuit. Um, usually on the Slayer you have one tiny little resistor, which is right here. You get that little resistor and connect it between your base and your collector and it will start oscillating. The only bad thing is, depending on the resistance value, it may or may not work at its peak efficiency, which is where the ringer comes in. Once you deactivate it, this thing will continue to oscillate at its optimum residence. So, that's really all you have to do to get it set up. It's just put the little pieces together. So I'll pause it here and get some of these things attached and we'll go step by step. All right, so I put a piece of paper here so it'd be a little easier to see. What I've done is taken the bottom of your secondary coil and the first connection you wanna make is to your base, right there. And I've added another little wire here that'll connect your resistor here in a moment. And all you have to do is get that first connection to your base and then we'll get the little resistor attached right here. So there we go. We'll get that all set up and put the camera down and I'll get it attached and then we'll go to the next video. Okay, so after I got the base attached, I have another little wire and you don't even need this wire if you can, you're a really good solder and you can just solder it straight across. But I like this little extra wire just to help give me some flexibility. And it attaches to one side of the little push button and then the other side of the push button is connected to my resistor. So the resistor goes straight here to my collector. So that just momentarily switches on from the Slayer circuit. And then when I release, it goes into self-oscillation. And then next, I'll attach this wire to here. And that'll give my power to my transistor. All right, so before I wired it all up, I decided I'll go ahead and show you what you can do with the alligator clips. If you hook up to your base, you can choose whether you're going in through the bottom or the top until you get it all squared away here. So saying that you want to, I'll well, just get rid of this one. Let's say if you hooked it up anywhere here, so whether you're going top, middle, it usually starts at the third coil is usually the best one. It gives you the best uh, voltage and amperage to get the circuit going. So then you have just the alligator clip going here to here. And I'm going to turn on the power source. Turn up the volume. There you go. Okay. So, let's see if we got this to work. Nope, nothing working there. So, we'll try to switch it. We'll put the power down here. And have this come up at the top here. So we switched the direction. Now the power is going in through the bottom. Let's see if that'll work. Okay. Okay, so it took me a little bit to figure out what was going on here. Uh, a lot of different changes in values you have to consider. One being how much power is going into your system. Right now I had it, I have it at 14, whereas previously I had it only at 10. And this changes the 
amount of voltage and amperage going in. Also had to change my resistor because this resistor, while it works good on this transistor, it's the wrong value for this transistor to get it to self oscillate. So I wouldn't even power up. And that's something else that a lot of people fail when they're building Slayer circuits is they get the wrong value of resistor and then they say, oh, it doesn't work. Well, you have to keep testing and trying different values. Uh, so this one works really good with this transistor, while this resistor works better for your N2N3055. So, um, so yeah, back where I was at, like I said, with the uh, alligator clips, you can switch the directions. If it's not working one way, you can try it the other way. Uh, for this one, I've got the power supply going straight into the top, and then it's coming out the bottom, and that's the way it works. Um, so you can experiment a little bit, get the light to come on as a slayer, but it won't self-oscillate. So we're going to keep going down until we get the right value. And there's not coming on at all. Barely lights up, can't even see it. Nope. And go down to the third one. That's usually where it works. Nope. Alright. Oh, second one. Yeah, I'm trying. Give it a little bit more juice. Go up to 17 volts. Oh, and there it's working really bright. Let's move it back out. Let's see if we can get it to where. Yeah, it still lights on three. Let's see if we can get it to light up on four. Nice, all right. Five. Barely, not quite as brightly. But as you move out, it also changes your amperage. Right now I'm at point one. I'm further out on the frequency range. Whereas if I go down here, I get a lot less resistance. Then using a lot more amperage. Almost yep, have it set at one amp to where it cuts off. So let's go back out here. So there you go. That's that's the oh now it's not even firing up on that one. Oh, there it goes. So there's the self oscillating. Hopefully this will guy will help you guys build this simple little circuit. Uh, you just gotta tweak it a little bit, try to get it to work the best that you possibly can and change your voltage and your power supplies if you guys just have a simple 9 volt or 12 volt battery it'll take you guys a lot more tweaking to get this thing to work um, something else I wanted to show you real quick your LEDs I mentioned this in the other video but you have to have them in a certain direction power is actually going to be on the ground side to get this LED to work. So I don't know if you can see it. No, zoom out. Okay, on the LED, the thick uh, cathode, I think as was, cathode side is going to be on your base. That's normally your negative. On your LED, it's going to go to your base, and then the positive side is going to go to your ground. That's another thing you're going to have to experiment with in order to get your LEDs to light up right. Now, it'll work without the LEDs. You'll just have to have a fluorescent tube and hold it here to see if it's on or off. The LEDs just make it nice and convenient to let you know if your circuit's running or not. But it will run without them. It's just not as convenient. Anyway, hope this guy's helped you. Bye.